We have the paradoxes of quantum mechanics because we have no fundamental understanding of the time continuum. In quantum atom theory, the emission and absorption of light or electromagnetic radiation from one atom to another creates the forward motion of time. Each individual atom of our universe creates its own space-time geometry relative to its position and momentum. Because it is impossible to achieve absolute zero, all atoms radiate electromagnetic radiation continuously, even the atoms of an observer. The atoms bond together and then create their own space-time geometry and symmetry in unison. Just like ripples on a pond, each atom will radiate out light spheres of quantized wavefronts. Each wavefront will create a probability of a future event. When a wavefront comes in contact with the electrons on the surface of another atom, it will create a new moment in time and space in the form of a photon-electron coupling. This has nothing to do with consciousness. All atoms create their own space-time geometry. But it is because life in the form of an observer can choose when and where to collapse the wave function that we have free will. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time, forming its own broken symmetry of its own evolutionary path. It is the conscious idea that leads to the physical act, but it is the action itself that collapses the wave function in quantum physics. The forward momentum of light, or electromagnetic radiation, is continuously creating a blank canvas for the observer that she or he can participate in. This is what Socrates called a sea of beauty. To put this very simply, time moves at the speed of light, and energy and mass slow it down to form their own space-time geometry. Therefore the observer will collapse the wave function, creating his or her own independent reality of time and space. This is very difficult to visualize, but in this oil painting of a geisha girl walking through sunlight, using the terminology of quantum mechanics, the wave part of the duality of the light will collapse as she walks through the rays of light. She will collapse the wave function into moments of time and space, creating her own space-time geometry. The best way to see this happen directly with light is in the two-slit experiment. When the light reaches the screen with the two slits, the photons will react with the electrons of the screen. This will collapse the wave particle duality of the light, creating new quantum particles in space and new moments in time. The part of the wave that does not come in contact with the screen will expand in all possible routes, going through both slits. Constructive and destructive interference between the waves will cause them to superimpose or cancel each other out. When this wave particle function comes in contact with the screen, it will collapse, creating moments of time and quantum particles in the shape of an interference pattern. When the observer turns on a detector to determine which slit a photon passes through, the interference pattern collapses. At that moment in time, the interference pattern disappears, because to observe the photon we have to physically create a photon-electron coupling collapsing each wave front into a new quantum particle that will have its own position in space and time that the wave front never had before the collapse. This has nothing to do with consciousness. If we turn the detector off, we remove the photon-electron coupling and in time the interference pattern reforms. Just like in Newton's first law of motion, the interference pattern will continue to maintain its state unless acted upon by an external force. The symmetry and geometry of time is the key to understanding quantum mechanics. When any object performs an action, changing its position and momentum, it will also change the frequency of electromagnetic radiation. The Planck constant will then change relative to that frequency. This will give the object a unique position in time and space, and this is the reason why we have Einstein's theories on relativity. To fully understand this, we need to look not just down into the probability of the quantum world of the atoms, but also up into the beauty of the night sky. If we look up at the stars, we can see back in time through light years of space. The further we look, the further back in time we see. 
The position of the observer within the universe makes no difference. Whatever planet or galaxy he observes from, he will see the universe expanding and be able to look back in time in all directions. The observer is at the center of his own reference frame because he is creating his own space-time geometry relative to his position and momentum. This process of looking back in time can be put in reverse and the closer we look at an object, the less time will elapse. When we look down into the atom, we can see time-dependent quantum mechanics when the atoms bond together, forming space-times of their own. But when we zoom in on an individual atom, we find time-independent quantum mechanics and there is no flow or arrow of time and all we have is an electron cloud of probability. The probability of the uncertainty principle is the same probability that the observer will have with any future event. We can see time is variable because we have time dilation when objects accelerate towards the speed of light. We also have gravitational time dilation around objects of great mass. It is because the atoms can distort the geometry of space-time that we have electromagnetic fields. It is time variations within magnetic fields that act as a source for electric fields, and time varying electric fields is a source of the magnetic fields. When one field is changing in time, then a field of the other is induced. This will be relative to the position and momentum of the objects creating the time variation, the atoms themselves. The magnetic fields are always at right angles to the electric fields, forming the local space-time symmetry and geometry that will spiral out, creating the visual and mathematical patterns of our universe. The greater the angle in space, the greater the curvature of space-time, the stronger the electromagnetic field at that point in space and at that moment in time. This can be seen as sparks of light associated with static electricity. The atoms will even distort the geometry of space-time, creating electrostatic discharge in the form of lightning. In this theory, it is only logical that the wonders of modern electronics are based on the paradoxes of quantum mechanics. This is because electric charge is quantized and we generate electrical power mainly by changing magnetic fields or moving a conductor through a magnetic field. This will distort the geometry of space and time, leading to the electromagnetic induction of our own created space-time, in other words, electricity. The quantum of quantum physics is a variable of time, forming the geometry and symmetry of space-time. This can be seen because the curvature of space-time has left something behind in the curvature of solid objects. There are no straight lines in nature, from the curvature of the moon to the bow of a tree, to the growth rings of the tree itself. Everywhere we look, we can see, within the diversity of nature, the same common symmetry, the same guiding force. This can only be because of an underlying symmetry and a continuous process of symmetry breaking. This can be seen in spiral galaxies. The galaxies atoms at the center of the galaxy have turned the light back in on itself under its own gravitational force, forming the imperfections of its own broken symmetry, of its own spiral space-time geometry. The same patterns can also be seen in seashells and throughout nature because the same process governed the evolution of life. Early life forms move towards the light, creating their own broken symmetry of their own evolutionary path. This broken symmetry can also be seen in mirror symmetry within the physical shape of all living things, even the observer. Therefore the observer will see and feel time as only having one dimension, but in reality the observer is creating their own space-time geometry in three-dimensional space. Consciousness itself must be governed by the same process of symmetry breaking. Consciousness was responsible for the physical action that broke the symmetry, but the symmetry had to be there to start with. In quantum atom theory, this symmetry is the symmetry of the time continuum that forms the geometry of space-time.